Take a look at these two jugs of milk. The one on the left likely came from a Holstein cow, the most common dairy breed. And she was probably fed a mixture of grass and grains, like corn and soybeans. The one on the right came from a Guernsey cow, whose diet was 95% grass. It looks almost like eggnog with a rich yellow color. Most of the reason for that golden hue is the breed, but it's also partly due to the feed. If that crunching sound is any indication, these cows must be enjoying their lunch here in the pastures of Woodburn Creamery in Mount Airy. Most of our field is a combination of orchard grass and clover. So this, this is red clover and will grow to about a foot tall and it'll have nice big red flowers on it. And then most of the tall grass you see here behind is orchard grass. It'll give them lots of nutrition. The cows here consume a diet of almost all grass. And for these girls, grazing comes as naturally as producing milk, which is why farmer John Fendrick decided to raise the herd this way. My wife decided she wanted to make cheese. I wanted to take care of her own cows. And at the same time, so this whole sort of buy local movement was happening. And so we thought about it, decided we wanted to buy a bigger farm. And, you know, we looked around and we thought, well, grass, you know, basically grass feds more natural. And so that's how we wanted to raise the cows. Of course, raising grass fed dairy isn't as simple as just putting cows in a field. John uses a system called managed intensive grazing to make sure the herd gets the nutrition they need without hurting the pasture. If you overgraze your grass, then it takes a lot longer for the grass to recover. So in our fields, the main area has 32 fields. There's another section with 15 fields behind it. There's a couple more fields on the other side. The cows are in every field for no more than 12 to 24 hours. But the key is to move them from field to field before the grass gets eaten too much. From above, you can see the sections where the cows have recently mowed the grass. And the fuller pastures they'll move into soon. And in the winter, when fresh grass isn't an option, John feeds them a mix of dry hay and fermented haylage made from alfalfa. So it's these big round bales, and alfalfa is a legume, so it's a bean, and it's really, really good. It's really high protein for them. The only grain the herd eats comes as a treat, courtesy of the robotic milker. So they get about 5% of their feed in the robot, and that's an inducement for them to want to come in. It basically does have some corn, mainly has minerals to basically counterbalance anything that they're not getting out in the grass. When the cows get milked is up to them. The machine does everything from identifying the cow, to cleaning the teats, to the milking itself. Then it's back to the pasture. To get from the north side to the south side, they have to go through where the milking parlor is. And they know that when they go from north to south or south to north, there's gonna be a new field for them to eat new grass. The cow's diet and breed causes them to produce less milk than conventional dairy cattle. But that milk does come with benefits, such as increased levels of omega-3 fatty acids, which can improve cardiovascular health. And that's not all. It'll have A2A2 milk. So A2 is a beta casein in the protein of milk that is supposed to make it easier for people to digest. Guernsey milk also has a higher fat content, which gives it a creamy texture, and more beta carotene, which gives it that distinct yellow color. When they move from haylage to grass, that color becomes a darker color. Throughout the year, it's a sort of a golden color, but in the springtime, it, it goes to a darker yellow or a golden color, because I guess they're just getting a lot more beta carotene out of the fresh grass. A reminder that things can be greener on the grass-fed side or, in this case, golden. Hi, 
Thanks for watching Maryland Farm and Harvest. If you like this story, leave us a comment. If you want to see more, check out our playlists. We've got videos of cute animals, big machines, delicious farm-to-table recipes, and more.